Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleague Jim Patterson. Jim will be today's presenter and will discuss the topic of extending project for the web with portfolio prioritization using OnePlan and Microsoft Teams. This webinar is a new addition to our series of adaptive webinars, so if you enjoy this video, feel free to watch the others we have available on our channel and look towards the next installment, which we'll be releasing soon. And as always, I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management and gets you excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Thank you again. I'll now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thanks, Robert. Welcome, everybody. Um, you know, in this age, there's a lot of things in transition. Uh, Microsoft Project is making some evolutions in their uh, development of Project for the Web. Um, and there's increasing needs in the areas of project portfolio management, including the prioritization and selection of projects. And there's a great uptick in use in the use of Microsoft Teams in the marketplace. Bringing these things all together into a collaborative environment and providing rich capabilities in project and portfolio management and for scheduling uh, is something that OnePlan is doing in conjunction with Microsoft and in partnership with Microsoft. So let's talk about what that looks like today. So for those of you that haven't delved into this yet, Microsoft Project for the Web is really the latest innovation from the Microsoft Project Group within Microsoft. It's really about providing a more modern and simple and powerful project management tool uh, for the masses. Uh, Microsoft Project on the desktop or Project Professional has been kind of the standard for decades now, and uh, it provides great capabilities. Uh, in this modern age, in this app culture that we have today, people have a desire for simple, easier to get started uh, capabilities, but still be able to do the scheduling that they need. So what Microsoft Project for the Web is designed to do is provide a fresh new experience to make collaboration among your projects easy and provide an innovative platform to make all this happen. As you can see in the animated, there's timelines or Gantt charts available to you for your schedules in an easy fashion. There's more board views like planner in order to work with your projects uh, more like boards uh, in a more agile fashion. And there's just simple grid views like a list like you do in a spreadsheet and actually working with the data within those plans. So very flexible modes that you can work with. Now, one of the differences is that Project for the Web is built on Microsoft Power Platform. And the Power Platform uh, is different than what we've done in the past with, say, Microsoft Project on the desktop. Uh, instead of saving it to either MPP files uh, or with working with Project Online, which is built on a SharePoint foundation, this is built on the Power Platform and the data repository in the back end is called Dataverse. And all your project data is being stored in that Dataverse repository when you actually create and just enter data into your project for the web plans. And it's also designed to use other things around that, like your Power Apps, Power Automate for workflows, and Power BI for, re, uh, for reporting, of which there's uh, report packs available uh, for that that gives you some good visualization of uh, um, uh, reporting data from your project for the web plans. Now, there are many apps available, and they're increasing all the time for managing different work and work items in, in Microsoft Teams. And Project for the Web is one of them. So if you go to add a tab uh, into a team in uh, Teams, uh, one of those options would be a Project, which is really Project for the Web um, that it would be offering you. Uh, you would need to be licensed properly for the type of role that you'd want to play within that. But the idea is it's designed to be added into Teams in and of itself. Now, given that, and the fact that you can create a number of different project plans that are all being stored in the Dataverse on the back end in that repository, this gives you the ability to have one central place to get that data, regardless of whether or not you're just opening individual projects and working with your individual schedules on a personal basis, that's fine. Be able to look at things a little more in the aggregate from a reporting purpose, uh, for, for reporting purposes, there is the Power BI reports and there is a standard content pack that's available for you that gets you uh, started with reporting around all that. Um, but it really is just schedule data at that point. And the question is, what else is needed in Teams to provide a complete project and portfolio management solution that includes our topic today of prioritization and selection? So the idea is there's different dimensions that there's prioritization scoring, but there's also things like resource constraints and financial constraints and other uh, considerations 
uh, that need to happen in order to really have a fully functional capability in that regard. And uh, we're going to talk about how one plan extends uh, Microsoft Project for the Web to provide all these capabilities for you. So one plan really is about connecting your strategic all the way down to your execution levels. And today we're going to talk about Project for the Web and how that feeds in because there are uh, an out of the box connection with Project to the Web for the Web and one plan. And one plan is that can actually be rendered in Teams as an authorized Microsoft Teams application. Now that doesn't preclude the fact that you could also bring project professional plans and say plans from Azure DevOps into the mix, but our focus today is extending project for the web. So if all you were looking to do is take the project for the web capabilities and provide additional capabilities to that, we support that fully. Because one plan is a, also a Microsoft authorized Teams app. So for example, it can, if you're licensed for one plan, you can actually uh, have it show up on the left navigation or left rail as they call it, such that you can just access the application in general, right from within Teams as you're doing all your other collaborative type of work within Teams. You could also, just like Project for the Web, um, add it to any particular team with the add tab plus sign in there and add that to within a team and be able to access the one plan capabilities in addition to, to augmenting what you're doing with Project for the Web. But some of the capabilities we're going to talk about today is really extending beyond just having your scheduled data from your project for the web plans. For example, having an overall portfolio plan and portfolio views and portfolio timelines, for example, across all of your plans and having uh, some rich views and capabilities at that portfolio level is something that one plan adds. Also, the ability to not only have project for the web plans feed into this portfolio, but perhaps maybe you have a lot of time and effort invested into existing Microsoft Project Desktop plans that you'd like to include in addition with that. Um, and those may, you know, uh, wean over time as more and more people gravitate towards Project for the Web. But the idea is the capability is there to have uh, a portfolio that includes all of your Project for the Web plans, as well as any project professional plans that you may still have. Now, the other key piece of portfolio management is deciding what we're going to work on and prioritizing what we want to work on. So the ability to have pro uh, portfolio prioritization modeling in here uh, is something that's key and be able to look at that in context of like resource constraints and financial budget constraints that we have. For more agile folks, the concept of portfolio boards gives us the ability to uh, prioritize in more of a drag and drop agile fashion and basically introduce things that might be in our backlogs into the active portfolio mix and evaluate that uh, against constraints. And then portfolio roadmaps also gives us some visualization of what is on our plate and look at uh, uh, where things stand and where things might be conflicting. To make that happen, there also has to be resource capacity planning to start with and be able to have resource capacity plans that are in the solution that you can look at when you're doing your project and portfolio prioritization and looking at do we have the resources to apply in order to do all the things that we would like to do. The same thing holds true with financials. You have to have detailed financial plans and financial uh, information so that when we end, end of the day can look at our what-if scenarios uh, in terms of do they fit uh, within the budget constraints that we have and can do we have the dollars and the resources in order to do the things that we intend to do or do we have to prioritize and make cuts. To do that, one plan does provide uh, some really robust what if modeling capability. It gives you the ability to uh, look at uh, criteria uh, for things that you want to evaluate, uh, select or deselect uh, projects that you uh, are considering doing in this model, in more of a what if model, um, look at the result and say resource or financial implications and does it fit or does it still leave us with over allocations. And you can even decide. Uh, timing so you can stagger and maybe push things out or accelerate timelines on things to find the right mix that fits within your balance of the ability to apply resources and to apply dollars. And the idea is to be able to compare those scenarios so that we can come up with the right mix to execute on and decide to go, um, and, uh, go for. Now, the ability to do all this comes from one plant's uh, native capability to do uh, connections. And so our one plans, one connect capabilities uh, has out of the box connection to Microsoft Project for the Web, Project Desktop or Project Professional and Planner and other Microsoft tools like Azure DevOps in order to bring those things into the mix and support that 
use of those Microsoft planning tools. So with that, I'd like to go to a demonstration and show you some of these things in action. So let's start at the basic with Microsoft Project for the Web. Uh, for those of you that haven't uh, explored this yet, um, it really is the ability to easily create and uh, create project plans, uh, create and develop project plans. You know, here's what's called a project homepage on which, you know, the ability to have the list of projects and things that you've already built or things that have been shared with you or maybe some favorites you have in here are all here. But one of the key things is to be able to create a new project, either from a template <clears throat> or from um, just a blank project, for example, or import a plan that you might have had from a Microsoft Project Professional plan. Um, just starting from a blank plan, to just to show the easiness of this, you know, it's simply a matter of going in here and naming your project. Um, and, and at that point, uh, once you've established that um, um, in here, you can then just start simply adding tasks like you would in a, in a, in a list view or something like that. So if I just did something very, you know, highlight design, build, test, you can just start building these things much easily, just easily like you would in a spreadsheet, but in an online fashion. You can even do things like, um, um, you know, put durations in against these things, for example. So if I put in like five days and you know, 10 days and five days and have those things in there, I can even add columns and fields in here. So for example, if I wanted to add things like the start date and the finish date, et cetera, uh, I can add those things in there very simply. And I'm not gonna sit here and have me do all kinds of data exercises, but just wanna give you the basics of what we can do here. Um, the other piece here is that you can actually align these with actually existing uh, Microsoft groups and be able to actually have these groups um, uh, aligned with this. So for example, you can either create a new group for this project in and of itself, you know, or you can actually uh, align it with uh, uh, an existing group that you might have. So for example, I could come down here and look at the, uh, I could pick say, say the PMO group and add that to the mix. And now this is shared with everybody in the EPMO group, as well as the ability to assign resources from those groups. So, for example, I could add Daniel here and I could add, you know, on this task, I can add, you know, Steve Masters. And on this tab, I can add um, uh, people from the team. But I also have the ability to add people that aren't on the team if I want to add to that mix as well. So uh, the key here is, is that you can do all the basics that you need to do in building a schedule. And that includes doing things like uh, be able to. Uh, select all these tasks and maybe do something like say let me um, um, add a dependency here and create dependencies across that such that we could see these and have dependencies across like a timeline etc etc so once again the simple ways to get started and build plans without a lot of training and all that stuff now instead of having doing data entry and to see all the capabilities i'm going to open up an existing plan that's more robustly built out and in here uh, in this software development project, there's a number of things I'm looking at here. You know, other fields of data in here, like the effort associated with that percent completes, you know, some visuals here on what's been completed, not completed, maybe some visuals on, you know, what might be overdue, right, that we haven't completed, et cetera. And then, you know, just some, you know, other things in here. This grid view is one thing, but that board view I talked, uh, that, that we talk about, you might have different buckets, like by what sprints there are, or Maybe you want to look at this just from a progress perspective on what's started, what's you know in progress, what's completed, or you might want to look at just simple things like, you know, you know who things are assigned to, for example, and see who's working on what. So those types of things are all available to you, as well as as I said, the timeline view where you could actually have. Uh, let me just go bring those up. Look at a timeline view like a traditional Gantt chart, and even some data like some charting like you'd have in Planner or from a people perspective, see who's assigned to on what in a detailed fashion. Uh, and even just some resource assignment allocation within the project itself, where you could go look at something like this, and let's just say I want to look at that weekly, and I can basically see you know, who's assigned where over what periods of time on those types of things. So once again, simple things, but once again, this is all project schedule related data and the assignments of people within that. So it's, uh, uh, it's, um, it's just something to think about. Um, now, this is great from a scheduling perspective. You can actually come in here and, you know, add this to a team from in here, or you could actually, you know, go in and add this to a team while you're in Teams. 
So with that, I think I, what I'll do is I'll go over to a, um, a Teams uh, area here in the browser. And as I look at this, you could see that um, in a particular team here where you have your standard posts and your files, et cetera, right? You might have you know, a OneNote notebook in here for your you know, project management or uh, purposes, et cetera. And here I've got some status meeting notes, for example. But in this mix, you can easily add project to that mix. And in that mix, you can either add, uh, uh, you can add the, uh, uh, a brand new plan, or you can add an existing plan that's been shared with a particular team. And the idea is that just very easily you can insert that. Now, one that's already been inserted into this particular team, and looking at this project for the web plan in context of teams, it's once again, this is just the scheduled data like we talked about with the grid and the boards and the timelines, et cetera. Um, and it's in here, but it's in the context of the other tools that you might be using. So, you, you know, you have your files, you have your notebook, you have your you know, project, you might even have access to your Power BI reports from within here. And the idea is it gives you a nice hub, but project for the web is still just providing the scheduled data here uh, for that capability. Now, if we wanted to do something more enhanced, um, uh, we could incorporate the use of one plan. So for example, if we uh, go to this strategic portfolio management team, and in that, you'll see, for example, that you could just as easily add a, could add a, a tab here where one plan is a, a, a tab that you can add, just like you would with Project or any of the other authorized Microsoft Teams app that you have. Now, with that, um, you could come into um, you know, one plan and work with one plan right within the context of Teams. So when we come in here, you know, what we're talking about doing is adding portfolio management capabilities, meaning more than just the schedule level data, right? It's about rolling this stuff up into portfolios and providing tools and capabilities that can help you manage your portfolio. Now, um, for this mix, I'm going to expand the screen just so I can get more real estate in here. And once again, I'm still in Teams. I'm just in full screen mode here. And um, in this particular case, I'm looking at a portfolio of projects um, that is being managed within the entire one plan portfolio. And as you can see, I have um, some Microsoft project plans in here. And plans that are actually coming in from Project for the Web uh, based on the connector that one plan has that allows us to do that. Now, as I look at these views at the portfolio level, um, I have list views like this that give me different perspectives, like this project summary has a heavy KPI orientation to know where I'm on track and things like schedule health and effort health, et cetera. These can be either manually set or formula driven. I might be looking at um, something more, oh, I don't know, more of a financial summary. So if I'm looking at the dollars and I want to look at a view at the portfolio level across all my projects, I've got this portfolio view with these financials that I might be looking at uh, there as well. Um, if I look at, say, maybe I'm just interested in when things are going to get delivered and I want more of a schedule summary, I can look at that here uh, and look at it from a schedule perspective very quickly and very easily. And at the portfolio level, look at the timelines of all of the different projects that I have at this, at this portfolio level. And these are the things that I have in flight. Um, you know, and then again, to talk about the main topic today is if I'm really interested in project prioritization, we can have prioritization views in here, maybe even different prioritization views that allow us to look at this from a, a prioritization perspective and whatever prioritization mechanism that I'd like to have in place here. For example, I've got business drivers here like strategic alignment, lower cost, improve employee uh, retention, risk reduction that all contribute to a calculated prioritization score. So how well it strategically aligns, maybe it's an extremely uh, extreme alignment with that. Well, all the way down to no alignment at all. What I select in the gradations here is going to contribute to a weighted score that gives us a prioritization based upon the model that you have. And we can talk about different things that you might want in there uh, as well. Um, if you uh, wanted to uh, drill into a particular project, and I look at this project for the web project, since we're talking about project for the web today, as I drill into that particular project, what you'll see is 
Um, there is the concept of um, a details page. And this details page provides data at the portfolio level, uh, data that wouldn't necessarily be carried in the project for the web plan itself. For example, categorization and characterizations of your project. In this case, like what portfolio or program it might be part of, what industry, what business unit, who's the manager or the executive sponsor, you know, what goals it might be aligned with, et cetera, what kind of category or type of project it might be. There might be business case narrative in here. Uh, the prioritization mechanism that's in here with the prioritization score, uh, roll up of the schedule data from that project for the web plan, the financials that may have come from, from this and the, and the effort, et cetera. And this fee form is completely configurable, including maybe having your life cycle process or uh, the stages of your life cycle for your project uh, in here. And you can advance or uh, advance those things through those as they, uh, as they occur. Now, as we, you know, look at this, and I go into the uh, work plan itself, this is where the connection is really happening with Project for the Web. So as I open up this work plan and I look into the schedule, I've got a plan here that's rolling into one plan, but this is being, this is coming from a connection to Project for the Web. So in Project for the Web here, you can see that it's actually connected, um, it's in there, um, the, our One Connect platform will automatically synchronize that information uh, on a periodic basic basis, typically hourly. But you can import and export the data from here uh, to there uh, uh, on demand should you want to, but you don't have to. But the key here is, is if I go in here and I actually open the item from this connection, it's actually connected to the project for the web plan that's being summarized into the portfolio. So this particular project for the web plan. It's a kind of a simple plan here, uh, but it gives us the ability to work with this plan or wherever or however I come at this plan. Uh, if I went to it from the project homepage, like I showed you earlier on, and just go right into project for the web, those updates will automatically, will automatically be synchronized into one plan uh, as we go through. So the idea there is, is that project for the web becomes the scheduling tool that's being augmented by the portfolio capabilities that we're going to show you here today in one plan and the prioritization mechanisms. So once again, if I I'll, I'll go to a full screen here just to I'll make this beyond just the work plan, uh, you can also um, uh, track things in here like your issues, your risks and your change requests. You can also have a resource plan such that that resource constraint capacity planning and prioritization we're going to show you a little bit later on it gives me the ability to plan in terms of hours or full-time equivalents or percentages of allocation what those resource requirements are going to be both for named or generic or generic resources and even be able to look for candidates in here and find resources that might be uh, good matches for what, uh, what what is up above here as I go look through this so as I go and say you know if I was looking to replace or find something by a current role I could actually say, you know, what resources might be available to take this work and actually replace resources up above, or I could come up above and I can actually add new resources to the mix just by adding assignments in here. And I can assign things by hours per month, total percentage of allocation, or total hours to be spread over a time period as I want to see fit. So the idea there's resource planning, which is a key component of prioritization, uh, whether or not we have the resources to do those things are built up by my resource estimates that happen in the individual projects themselves. On the financial side of things, having detailed financial plans so that we can figure out whether or not the budgets for these will fit within our overall budgets for the organization or for our projects. In this particular case, you can define your uh, uh, cost categories, uh, labor and non-labor, and figure out what those total costs for your projects are going to be and have those roll up uh, into the mix. The key here is, is as you do all that, you can uh, factor that in when you start selecting your projects and figuring out what you actually can do and what you can deliver on. I would say this too, the ability to actually have status reports from all this and have those be a natural output of this process also feeds into the prioritization process because as we progress and as things are doing well or not doing well, that might, might factor into our prioritization decisions on what we might continue with or if we might be tackling new things and maybe putting these things on hold or canceling them all part of that prioritization process. Now, early on in the prioritization process, you might start at more of an idea state. 
And in that idea state, you might be looking at a variety of different things. Uh, let me look at maybe a list of requests or ideas that come in. And much like the project details page that I showed you, you can establish a form for those detailed, um, um, detailed requirements that you might have or uh, submissions that you might have against a request or an idea and a, an approval life cycle for this. So characterizing this about what type of project it is, et cetera, maybe some narrative on some business case, you know, maybe some other key elements and even associating it with certain things like other applications or other projects, for example, are things that you might want to have in the mix. Now, at the appropriate time, notice that we may have a prioritization scoring mechanism in here as well that generates a prioritization score. And also at the appropriate time, as we decide whether or not we want to pursue this, I can actually, uh, what they call reorganize this, and take this idea or request and promote it into a project and carry forth all that request data that came with it so we don't lose that record and we maintain that continuity from the beginning of the idea all the way through the execution of the project. So once again, we get to uh, take that from very early on. And ultimately, we end up with a portfolio at least of candidates of things we want to be able to do. Now, I showed you some of those views in this portfolio earlier on. But now, if we really want to focus on prioritization, uh, we've got a list of prioritization scores of all these different projects. And some of them are still proposed. They may have come from the idea state and they might have come in and say, listen, this approved for consideration that we want to do it, but we have to decide whether or not we can do all the things that are in the portfolio here yet. So in that regard, um, let's just say I have a ranking of these projects. And it may, at the end of the day, may not accurately reflect or ultimately reflect purely the prioritization scores. For example, you might have compliance projects. You might have some executive preference on how we do these things. And you may take this ranking that you see over here, one through whatever number here, and you might decide that number nine really needs to be up here at number six and basically force rank those and make those part of the ranking as well. So once again, you can do some manual reprioritization and force ranking of your projects here. Now, if I was going to do a what if scenario, maybe looking at do we have the resources to do all these projects, I come in here and notice that I have the projects in here that are coming for project for the web and the project, et cetera. Um, and let's just say I want to do a resource constrained what if analysis. In this case, I've got all these candidate projects and I got check boxes here to say if I did all these things from top to bottom, what would it take from a resource perspective below? Now in this model, and it's a demo model, I've got some severe over allocations down here. Um, you know, I can look at this in terms of hours or FTEs or whatever it might be, and basically see that I've got resources in here that are uh, over allocated to some degree in this model if I do all of these projects in the time frames that are specified. So for example, Let's say I go down to our lowest, lowest ranked projects. And let's say, for example, I said, all right, we're not going to do these bottom four lowest ranked projects. What does that do? And notice it's recalculating this. And now I don't have as much red. You know, this is severe, but I've got more green. I've got some more yellow uh, in here. So it's something that I might more readily be able to do and be able to save these things as scenarios along the way and have different scenarios that I save. Uh, uh, to evaluate, say, with a steering committee or other decision makers that I might have. In addition to uh, deselecting projects, I might decide that, you know, some of these proposed projects, maybe we do want to do them, but maybe we should say, you know, we, we're going to have to wait a couple quarters to do those things. And I'll take that one, and let's say I'll take this one, move that out and notice that each time I do, it's re-racking and recalculating the resource requirements down below, possibly and hopefully fitting these things more incompletely to something that we can do. And ultimately, when you're saving these scenarios, um, you can just save them incrementally and you know come back to them and you can save as many as you like. Now we talked about the financial plans on top of the resource side of things. So looking at this scenario once again from a financial constraint perspective, we can then put your budgets or your financial plans down below here in the aggregates around that and compare them with our budgets or our targets, say, for the fiscal year. And notice I have some red here, and it looks like I'm over where I need to be. 
So I might have to do more, you know, trimming where I might deselect some more projects uh, or I might move some more projects and have it see as it gets closer to whether or not I can fit it within my budget constraints. So in this case, I'm still a million dollars over. So I've got some uh, moving of projects or deselecting a project yet to do to make that happen to ultimately come up with a solution. So the idea is you can further refine these and have as many models as you like in order to get to where you want to be. Now, that being said, uh, our new modeler capability allows us to take this and kind of segment this a little more and do things on a little more targeted basis and do a little bit more analysis. So that same type of what if analysis that we were talking about earlier on, uh, you can do different models in here. So for example, if I go to select a new model and create one, I get to name it and you know maybe give it a theme or put it in one of the folders of the different things because I can do them by you know organization or by program or whatever it might be. So I can not necessarily be modeling the entire portfolio as I look at subsets of this. And then I can also choose what plans I would like to be in here. So for example, if I came in here and I wanted to say what plans, maybe I wanna look at them and do them by say associated programs and, and do the, the plans associated with certain programs or other criteria that I might have and align those and select projects based on criteria. Um, I could also then decide what fields that I want as my constraint. So what, what am I gonna use as my basic constraint uh, for, for targets? And what am I gonna use for a benefits target? What am I gonna use for sorting of this as I go through? And then from a cost perspective, what am I gonna use? The budget, for example, or the current forecast, et cetera. So I can use all this criteria to determine what I want to be in the model. So rather than go through all the nuts and bolts of all that right now, I'm gonna open up an existing model and it's gonna kind of further this discussion what I showed you about the what if scenarios just prior. Let's just say I go into this IT based uh, model for 2023 planning. And in this, I've got this similar prioritization view that, I, that you saw in the portfolio itself, but this is based upon all of the projects that we fed into that model when we created the model. And notice here, I've got, in this case, before I did a scenario, this is all the projects being selected. In this case, there's 114 of them. Now, if I go in here and I created a constraint for say a $20 million budget, I can go in here and do some selection and deselection of this. And this has already been done in here. I'm just gonna show you the net result. And in this case, to fit within the $20 million budget with this, it looks like I can only do 80 of those projects and that these are the ones that aren't gonna make the trip uh, in there based upon the scenario modeling that we did. Um, it's, um, uh, it's the same you know, financial and resource aspects of this. So if I go and look at the resource constraints in here, this will say based upon this constraint, this is what I can do on the financial aspects. This is what, where we fit in relation to the budgets and the financials that are in here. Same type of scenario, but here being done right within the modeler. Um, now, we have the ability with multiple scenarios in the modeler here, is we have the ability to uh, analyze this a little bit further. So for example, uh, in here, I've got two different scenarios that I've done here where I had a $20 million budget, but I also you know, said, what if we get another $5 million? What would that do? And this is basically saying, okay, if I spend more, I could actually do 13 more projects. I could get 93 projects in there, okay? Um, but on the benefit side of things, what happens here? On the $20 million budget, I can get about $18 million worth of benefits, but for another $5 million, I can get maybe another $8 million worth of benefit. It might be worth us finding the dollars for us to do that. So these are some of the analyses that we can do as we start looking at a model and comparing them. Now, beyond just listing this, comparing this with our targets and comparing them together, I could go in here and look at different scenario details. So for example, if I wanna compare the $20 million budget with this $25 million budget and do a compare, I have the list of plans. I have which projects and comparing which ones are in or which are out depending on those scenarios. And I can look at maybe the prioritization change based upon the different scenarios I did as I may have re-ranked some of those things. So once again, just a list of comparisons there. I might also look at say a dashboard of data. And in those dashboards, I might be looking at um, once again, the $20 million versus the $25 million budget and compare those. And in this particular case, I can see 
you know, the number of plans that we can get in. I can see what the budget is that we're going to be working on and maybe what the committed effort would be uh, that would take on the resource side of things for us to make those things happen. So once again, some more comparisons and analysis. On top of that, there's the, um, the old favorite bubble charts for portfolio analysis that come into play here. And in this particular case, you can actually set the parameters, you know, what the X and Y axis is and what the size of the bubbles are. Now I'll just do a, a pre-built one uh, here where I can look at where I've got the benefits on um, the Y axis and I've got the uh, prioritization score on the uh, X axis and the bubble size is the budget of that. Now, high benefits and high priority, you would think the upper white quadrant, quadrant would be the sweet spot. And we've got uh, a couple of projects up in there. There's uh, one plan work plan. I've got this uh, clinic uh, check-in kiosks and perhaps this new product one. I've got high prioritization, but lower benefits here for things like support center and Fabricam, et cetera, as I go through that. And if I wanted to incorporate here and show the plans that are in the are not in there, but in the scenario, I could show grade in the things that we're not doing as we're going through those. Now, another one, this IT alignment, maybe another perspective. Now I'm looking benefits versus prioritization score. And then in this case, I'm looking at what the benefits are and the prioritization on that. And maybe let's uh, let's get the out plans out of there and basically look at similar analysis around there as I as I visualize that. Now, speaking of visualization. We do have the ability, as I talked about, you know, the portfolio, we do have the ability to, and we're not going to really cover it in detail today, the ability to build strategy and align our projects with things like strategies or align them with things like applications or products or business capabilities and be able to factor in those associations or those dependencies may factor into your prioritization decisions. So, for example, if I open up the visualizer in here, I can first of all look very quickly to see if there's any hard dependencies that I have in here. Uh, let me go to, um, for example, support customer using mobile. Um, that one has a dependency to the customer experience plan, et cetera. And look at the interrelations in here in the model of what we have here. Now, from an overall dependency or associations, this runway view gives us the ability to look at things like, are we tied to certain strategies, objectives, and key results? So for example, I've got this strategy of launch new products successfully, and I have some key results here, like creates customer case studies and have a net promoter score uh, increase, and look at how those things are aligned with one another as we do those associations. So once again, as I'm prioritizing, I might say, I'm thinking about not including this project, but if it's aligned with something that's a key executive strategy, that is um, a key component of making sure that we achieve that strategy, we might want to think twice before excluding that project, for example, and actually looking at the colors of how this is tracking red, yellow, green, and if they're doing well or tracking, or we have to give some special focus on those things in order to uh, keep them in the mix. So once again, um, uh, doing this within teams is something that we can do very readily. So, let me recap um, the things that we just saw here. So Microsoft Teams, as many of you have already experienced, is a powerful hub for collaboration. Not only does it give us the ability to do chats, and meetings, and calls, and all that stuff, but it also gives us the ability to create teams that are hubs for collaboration and tools. So for example, we showed that there are uh, many applications that you can bring in as tabs within a team and that one plan and project for the web can definitely be uh, things that you can bring in to add power to that team and really add some advanced capabilities and one plan by adding that into the mix well project for the web brings the scheduling capabilities one plan brings powerful portfolio management capabilities to that team and then one plan provides a variety of solution templates for different customer needs as, depending on how you want to do your portfolio management okay so you can incorporate this to the extent that you want more robustly or more simply. And it can also support different methodologies like waterfall, agile, and hybrid methodologies for your portfolio management. Now, one plan is really focused on project and portfolio management. You know, one plan has been named three of the last four years as Microsoft's 
Global Project and Portfolio Management Partner of the Year. Uh, we're, we're, we're the finalist in uh, uh, the year that we weren't. But this is what we do. We're not a general systems integrator. We focus on this discipline and tools that help this discipline. We're even recognized by the analysts like Gartner and Infotech Research uh, for our achievements in this area and our thought leadership. Now, if you want to try the one plan capabilities and use it in conjunction with what you're doing with Project for the Web, for example, uh, we can get you started with a free trial. If you go up to Microsoft's App Source, you can select templates uh, up there um, uh, to work with. You know, the strategic portfolio management and the adaptive portfolio management are ones that would probably be most conducive for you in, in, in the concepts that we talked about today. Uh, but uh, reach out to us and engage with us. We're happy to chaperone you and help you get the most out of that trial if you like. We can also offer a roadmap workshop where we can talk about what you're currently doing today, you know, review your current use and maybe your aspirations of where you want to get to, and really kind of talk about a roadmap and what it would take to get you into a solution like we were uh, showing you today, and maybe what that might cost. And given the fact that you're using a lot of the Microsoft tools you already own, you may already have all this stuff and it just may be an incremental investment for you to get there. So the free trial, please take advantage of that. We're happy to chaperone you. Roadmap workshop, we're happy to work with you on that. And if you're not quite there yet, you just wanna see more. Uh, you wanna schedule a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo that targets specifically into some of your use cases and some of your requirements. Uh, reach out to us at contact at oneplan.ai um, and we'll happy to schedule that for you and tailor it for what you want. And once again, if you're not even there yet and you want to just look at us more, go to www.oneplan.ai and do a little research. There's a lot of good information about our solution out there in conjunction with what we're doing with Project for the Web. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Um, my contact information is here. You are going to get a copy of these slides. So if you want to reach out to me individually for some reason, just feel free to. I'm happy to, happy to support you any way you like. At uh, one plan, we bring all this stuff together, you know, the project for the web and the capabilities and the portfolio management stuff all under one umbrella so that you can do all these things uh, in one plan and within that collaborative hub where it brings it all together into teams. So that whole power of one, I think, is a very, uh, very good theme that we try, we strive to for that user experience. So thank you. One interface, one experience, one plan. We appreciate your time today. Thank you and have a great day. Please do engage with us.